what happens when you give a man a fish. He survives the day. What happens when you teach him how to gather fish himself? He will survive forever. What do most self improvement YouTubers do? They t- give you the fish, and if you pay them very much, they will show you where the fish is. But most of them will never show you how to actually get the fish, or they will tell you, but they won't show you. Because as soon as you know this, they won't make money from you. And don't click off right now. Because many self improvement YouTubers have told you, yeah, this video is gonna be the last one you will ever need to watch. And I'm not gonna sit here and say, but this one genuinely will be the last one. You be the judge. If you want this video to be the last one you'll ever watch, it will be the last one you'll ever watch. But you need to have determination and you need to do what I tell you. Do you think that I, for every single video I make about some topic, have to read a book or watch another self-improvement YouTube video? No, of course not. The way I make videos and the way I believe many people in the self-improvement space to make videos is to be in the gym or at work or doing something else or meditating. And then having a pocket journal like, hold up, this. And then they write down their ideas in this pocket journal and then they make a video on that idea. Did I mention reading a book once? No. Did I mention uh, watching a self-improvement video? No. (laughs) Because the real advanced self-improvement guys who are teaching you stuff, they aren't taking their own medicine. They're not watching self-improvement videos to get better. Because they know that the only true way to wisdom is good mental health and God. Now, many people think they're bound to the Lord and that, that, that they rejoice in the name of the Lord. But I'm actually going to tell you that most of the people who say this are absolutely delusional. They're all godless cowards. Every single one you see on Instagram with animated clips of the Bible and Bible quotes that are animated and, and AI spoken about, they all are cowards and they're all godless read romans the first chapter and the second chapter and it will be eye-opening to you for many will think they're wise but none of them will actually be wise they just know where to get the fish but they don't know how to get it and i believe that i know how to get the fish And I'm going to be talking about true worship in this video. Many people say they worship the name of the Lord. And many people say that they are grateful for God. Let's not ask them about the how or about the what for that matter. But let's ask these people why they worship. And I guarantee you, most of them will say, well, I don't know. (laughs) And if they know, they're probably all going to say, because I want to be rich and strong and blah, 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 or some, some, some kind of, some, some kind of way of saying this in a nicer way. They're going to put it in a nicer way than saying, I want to be rich, but they are going to put it in a way that basically says that true worship is because of things in the past and gratitude. And false worship is because of selfishness. So, because you want the car, you worship God. You don't worship God because you trust Him. You worship God, or these people worship God. I can't talk about you, but I'm pretty sure that these people worship God because they kind of want something in the future. They read all these stories in the Bible and they seen Abraham being faithful. And he 
had kids like the stars on the earth. And they want that too. And that's why they worship. Let me tell you, my worship comes from a place of gratitude. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, far from it. I'm saying I have a lot of things to work on. But if your worship comes from a true place, from gratitude and not from selfishness, if you want to truly praise the Lord, truly praising the Lord in every single prayer and telling him why you praise him, he will give you wisdom then. And then he will give you the answers as to where the fish is, how to get it, and even how to make it. And he will also fill up your baskets of fish so much that you will be able to give other others fish. And I want you to promise something. If you implement everything that I say in this video, which are going to be three main habits, um, you are at some point not going to watch self-improvement videos. And I don't want you to subscribe or blah, 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 blah. I want you to promise that you're not going to sell fish to your younger self, basically. I want you to promise to swear an oath or not to swear an oath, that's wrong in the name of God, in the name of God. But you know what I mean? I want you to promise yourself, not me, yourself, to give people the answer and to spread this message and not to simply give them fish or sell them fish. The first habit is meditation. The second habit is gratitude journaling. And the third habit is prayer and reading from the Bible, which for me is the same. Now, at itself, these habits are done by many, many people these days, but they're not done correctly, or at least I believe them to not be done to the fullest potential that they really have. Meditation should be done in the following way. You sit there and you focus on your breath. And you will drift off into thoughts. And what you will then do, you will recreate the way your thoughts were. So at first, you might have thought, oh, my breath feels a little bit off. And then you thought, my breath was off when I had sex last week. It doesn't make sense for you right now. But when you're thinking these thoughts, it makes sense for you. You're just thinking, oh yeah, last week my breathing was off while I, while I was having sex. And then, and then you will be thinking about sex all of a sudden. And then you think about, I don't know, women. And then you think about Instagram. And what I want you to do is I want you to recreate this thoughts, right? I want you not to simply stop and go back to the, go back to the breath. I want you to think about why did I have these thoughts? And then you basically reverse engineer the, that thought pattern that you have. So when you thought breath, girls, Instagram, drugs, then I want you to think drugs and the thoughts you had about drugs, then Instagram then girls, then about the breath, and then you come back to the breath again. Sometimes you will think girls, Instagram, drugs, YouTube, gaming, and then you reverse engineer it all so you can be focused again and so your mind can penetrate your body again. The second habit was gratitude journaling. And gratitude journaling is done wrong by many people. It's as if they would fill out a form Every single evening, they fill out the form like, what you were you grateful for this evening? I was grateful for the weather. I was grateful for blah, 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 blah. And they do it wrong. What you need to do is you need to observe your thoughts and you need to grow a resilient mind through these practices. And observing your thoughts will be in the following way, the most efficient. You write something down, you write, I am grateful for, like after you have the thought, let's just go through one thought of gratitude. I am grateful for the rain. That's my thought right now. Then I will write down, I am grateful. And while I write these sort of brain dead thoughts of I am great, I am grateful, I am grateful. You write these things 100 times every month, 100 times every evening. 
And as I write these mindless words, I think, why am I grateful for the rain? Because it's a gift of life from the Lord. It's free water coming down from the sky. So from where God is, everyone points up when they say God, don't they? Everyone looks up when they worship the Lord, right? God is in the heaven and he's giving us the water that is life. Water is life and therefore rain is also life. So he gives us free life from the sky. This is a realization I had during gratitude journaling because I observed why do I like the rain so much? Even though I'm a kid of the sunshine, I love the sunshine and I love the rain. And I always thought, how can this be? Because I realized that the rain is also a gift of life from God. So this is what you do. You have a thought in your mind, then you write, I am grateful. And while you write, I am grateful for or because, I would always advise you to write because, because it's just more thought provoking than for. And while you write these words, you're thinking, why am I grateful for this? Why am I grateful for the weather? Why am I grateful for the birds? Why am I grateful for X, Y, or Z? The third form of self-improvement and the third form of growing closer to God and of true worship is prayer and reading from the Bible. And the way you read from the Bible is not silent. You will read out loud. And what this will do, it will slow down your reading process. What you can do to read even slower and take in more of that lesson is to breathe only through your nose. And what will happen when you do that is you will have to take breaks that are longer. That was a full breath through my nose and I was ready to speak again after two or three seconds. This was a th full breath through my mouth. I was ready to breathe in half a second, maybe one second. And if you breathe through your nose, you will be more mindful of what you say and you will be more mindful of the message from the Bible. So you will get more of the reading and while you breathe, you can even think, how can I implement the thing that I've just read into my life? Or how have I seen this in my life? How has the Lord affected my life? And then prayer. During prayer, I want you to thank God for everything you have. I pray every time before I eat, genuinely. And even if it's just a small prayer, I just say, thank you. Thank you. That's a prayer. Thanks. Thank you. That's a prayer addressed to the Lord. I say, thank you, Lord. Thanks for the food. Thanks for the clothes. Thanks for the house. Thanks for the camera. Thanks for, thanks for, for, for the weather. Thanks for the birds. Thanks for all of these things. And that's one prayer. So I pray four to five times a day, if not more. Because a true prayer is not the words you say. It's the thoughts you have. It's the emotions you're feeling. So worship the Lord as often as you can with as much as you have. And not because you want something in the future. And I know how tempting it is to just ask the creator of the whole world for, I don't know, a Bugatti or for money. Ask him instead to make you a more grateful and wise person and all these things will come. For wisdom is worth more than gold and silver and copper and bronze. Worship the Lord. Say thanks to him. And be mindful. Master your mind.